Good morning, Plymouth Church. Welcome to the worship of God on this Pentecost Sunday. We have a saying here at Plymouth and in the wider UCC, if you know it, join in. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are always welcome here. If you are visiting with us, we would love to meet you and answer any questions you may have. You can connect with the pastors by the doors at the end of the worship service, or right outside these doors, there is a welcome desk where we have a gift for you. I also invite you to grab that red friendship pad at the end of your row to let us know you're here and pass it down. If you are joining us on Facebook or YouTube, a special welcome to you. No matter where you are, you are always welcome here too. You can find the worship bulletin to follow along and the attendance registration in the captions to let us know you're here too. In the back of the bulletin, you'll find the current happenings to learn more about upcoming events, and I just want to lift up a few. Um, and you'll see an article of, about joining Pastor Jared and Lindsay on Jared 26 for an afternoon at Britain Arboretum. Everyone of all ages is welcome to encounter God and nature, and lunch will be provided as well. Registration is required by June 12th, so we know how many lunches we will need to include. And in that article, you can find the registration link. Tonight, Sunday, June 5th at 7 p.m., is the Matins Home Concert. The Matins leave for their South Dakota and Colorado Choir Tour on Friday. Come and see and support them before they leave for tour. Pride Weekend is next weekend in Des Moines and at Plymouth. We invite you to wear Plymouth and Pride shirts to church. Also, we will have our new summer worship schedule starting next weekend. We will have Sunday night at 5.30 in Waveland. Sunday at 9 a.m. will be a service of word and table in the Burling Room with a shorter message and weekly communion. Sunday at 10 a.m. will be our usual sanctuary worship service. Following the 10 a.m. worship service on June 12th, we will have box lunches for you so you can have lunch on the go as we head to the Des Moines Pride Parade starting point. Everyone is welcome to walk in the parade with Plymouth Church. If you aren't able to walk, find a spot along the parade route. We hope to see you at Plymouth next weekend and join us in the Pride Parade. Also, during our scripture reading, we will have sounds and flickering lights during the scripture reading, so if you are sensitive to those, um, this is just a heads up. But people of God, I invite you to stand in body or in spirit for our call to worship. After each petition, I invite you to respond in any language you choose. Spirit of the living God, visit us again as on the day of Pentecost, with rushing wind that sweeps away all barriers. Come, Holy Spirit. With tongues of fire that set our hearts aflame, veni sancte spiritus. With living waters that quench our thirst, come, Holy Spirit. With speech that unites the babble of our tongues, Ven Espiritu Santo. With love that breaks down the boundaries of race and nations, come, Holy Spirit. With power from above to make our witness strong, Veni Sancte Spiritus. Fill the hearts of your faithful people with love, come, Holy Spirit. Alleluia.
people of God, with one voice, let us pray our opening prayer. God of the wind and fire, on the day of Pentecost, you descended on your people as a mighty rushing wind and burst forth to ignite our hearts with the blaze of perfect love. Hallowed be your name. We confess that we have failed to be faithful to you. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. In your compassion, forgive us for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. As we gather to worship together, aim your breath with steady power on your church this day. Renew us and shape us into a people who know you and love you. In your name we pray. Amen. People of God, hear the good news. Jesus said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Power to love and know yourself as beloved. Power to forgive and know yourself as forgiven. Power to understand and know yourself understood. Let the power of that love and forgiveness and understanding sink deep into your soul this day. Let it transform and heal you and carry it out into the world, empowered by the Holy Spirit to share it with others in love. Friends, let us share signs of God's reconciling love with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then when they heard, one after another, their own mother tongues being spoken, they were blown away. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, Aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? Parthians, Midians, and Elamites. Visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia. Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia. Egypt and the parts of Libya. Immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joked. They're drunk on cheap wine. That's it. That's when Peter stood up and backed by the other 11, spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk, as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. 
It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters. Your young men will see visions, your old men dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red. Before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous, and whoever calls out for help to me, God will be saved. So I'm going to give a little framing before we um, listen to the beautiful questions and answers of our Matin seniors. So while working on the scripture reading with the Matins this last Wednesday, we were working out the pronunciations for the people, the countries, the regions that are listed off. Now, when this passage comes up at Pentecost at Bible study, 
We hear the collective sigh of all my colleagues, looking at A, the length of the scripture, and B, all of the names. Yeah, that passage. I asked the kids if they would like me to spell out the names phonetically and enlarge them on cardstock for today. They readily agreed <laughs> that that would help. Once I did that, I prepared to text each of them with their card to practice. I got sidetracked by curiosity. We just rattled these names off, which is fine. It serves to illustrate that people came from all over speaking in multiple languages, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, they could all understand each other. Sermon complete. Actually, no. Seriously. I wanted to know where each of these regions and countries were located, not only in biblical times, but also right now. Little did these kids know that they were going to get a history lesson with my text. It is important to know the meaning and context of what you're reading. So we read... Parthians, Medians, Elamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, I looked that one up, Egypt and parts of Libya, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. Now, in the present, we read Iranians, Afghanis, Turkmenistani, Iraqis, Israelis, Turks, Syrians, Egyptians, Libyans, Greeks, Arabs, North Africans, immigrants from Rome who were fleeing the suspicion and hostility from an imperial authority and Roman natives, Jews, even those newly converted to whatever religion. They heard, you are not wanted here if you are not native or one of us. Sound familiar? Biblical times and places are not so far-fetched when seen in this context. Border wars, immigration, waves of ref refugees, ethnic wars, fear over those who do not speak our language. If only the Holy Spirit could sweep down and help us understand one another. Oh Lord, please send down your Holy Spirit. But wait. We are a microcosm of the greater picture. We have an opportunity to know our neighbor, to welcome one whose name we cannot pronounce or whose customs are different, one who eats different things than we do, one who experiences the holy different from me. I hope and pray this is what we are doing here. Now, I see this every year as a new season of Matins begins. We aren't all from this neighborhood. And yes, I am fully aware that we are predominantly white and middle to upper class in our representation. What I'm trying to paint is a picture of who and what this group is. We draw from numerous different schools, different areas and suburbs of Des Moines. We all come with different beliefs. We all struggle to find our place, our people, our community. We represent at any given year anywhere from eight to 15 high schools from the metro area. Southeast Polk, Ankeny Central, Western Wine Valley, Norwalk, Johnson, Dowling Catholic, Hoover, Roosevelt, Waukee, Waukee Northwest. However, there are a lot of high schools missing. There's an opportunity to open our doors to those who don't look and talk like we do. We know we have work to do. Today, we are here to celebrate the ministry of the Matins Choir at nine o'clock worship and to hear from our seniors about what this place means to them. In this choir, we strive to live in covenant with one another. We try to live by the motto, all are welcome. We live into it by learning to break down walls through music that we sing and share, not only with each other in the choir, but also the world that's outside of our doors. I hope I hope we are creating a space where we can develop and practice love of God and love of neighbor so that when we walk out of these doors and visit with people in different places speaking of things we don't quite comprehend or understand in languages we fall short in understanding that we become a welcoming presence infused with the fire and the wind of the Holy Spirit and the love of a God in which each of us is known.
So each year I ask our seniors a question that I personally script because I know them. And I ask them to answer. So I'm gonna start off with Finn. Where are you, Finn? So Finn is a very giving and compassionate, accepting young man. And for years, you were Isaac's little brother. But in the past four years, I've watched you grow into your role as leader, friend, and supporter. If I ask you to help, you're always there. How has being a part of the Plymouth community, as well as the Matins Choir, shaped your development as a young adult? Oh, the other two mics are back there. OK, here, start here. Uh, so this is a much harder question than I expected to answer, because honestly, I have no clue. Uh, I would say the main thing is probably just wanting to help other people. I don't think I would have wanted to do that nearly as much as I do now if it weren't for Matt. And it's probably the only reason I'm going to school to become a teacher. Um, it's just this amazing group of people has had an impact on me that I honestly can't even probably describe it if I knew what it was. But I know that it's there. And I think the one way that I can describe it as, as wanting to help people if given the opportunity. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> All right, Charlotte. Fun fact, many people might know that Charlotte was the drummer for the Saturday Night Band her freshman year. She and Ada have this super cool band, and since joining Matt in her sophomore year, she has um, been a part of the backbone of this group, especially during the pandemic, helping us record. So Charlotte, share with us why you chose to play in the band and join Matins, and what being involved in the life of Plymouth and its music program has meant to you. Um, so yeah, I'm Charlotte, and as she said, I used to be the drummer for the Saturday Night, Night Worship Band here at Plymouth. Um, so you may be wondering, how did I become a drummer at a church I've never been to? I was actually a member of a Lutheran church before this, but anyway, when I was a freshman, one day at my drum lessons, my teacher Sam asked me about this gig at a church. And funny enough, he was actually Jewish, but he drummed at this church. <laughs> um, anyway, so he was a drummer for this worship band. But he was getting too busy to make it his priority, so he asked me if I wanted to, you know, be the new drummer. And at first I was like, absolutely not. Like, before this, I was a Christmas Easter Christian. Like, there was no way I was going to start going every Saturday. I was like, hell not. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry. Anyway, um... <laughs> Anyway, my parents ended up convincing me to take the offer. My parents over there, they convinced me to take the offer. And I'm very thankful they did. So I drummed for that band for a whole year. I actually drummed until I was a junior, but I drummed for that band for a year. And my friend Ada told me about the youth choir there. Ada, were, Ada in front of me, thanks Ada. Ada told me about this, the Matins Youth Choir. And once again, I was like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that. I already go every Saturday. I'm not gonna go every Sunday, Wednesday, and Saturday. I was like, no way. Well, as you can see, my parents found out and forced me to join. Um, but, you know, very, very happy they made me join once again. I've met so many amazing people, have made so many great memories here. Um, I also sing in my school's chamber choir. Well, I guess not anymore, I graduated. But I used to sing in my school's chamber choir. So it's been really fun to have another place to sing. Um, I was scared the songs would be all churchy and boring, but the songs are actually like really good, like Mark Miller. I love Mark Miller. His songs are so good. I love Mark Miller. I catch myself singing the songs all the time. Um, thank you, Plymouth, for all these amazing opportunities and being a part of my whole high school career. All right. Thank you. John. Honestly, when John showed up his freshman year, I didn't know if he would make it through. He was so painfully shy and kind of stayed to himself. Um, but when he started calling me Suze, I knew we were getting somewhere. And then he would drop a sarcastic comment, and I would go. <laughs> and then he became part of our youth leadership team. We wouldn't be the same without you, John. If you had to pitch to a young person the importance of Matin's choir and the role it played in your life, what would you say? All uh, right, first off, hi, Mom. All uh, right, so um, personally, Matin's has had a large role in my life you know, much louder than I ever kind of thought it would be looking back. Um, the main benefits, I'd say, are meeting new people. Uh, you get new experiences, and definitely gives you a huge place to grow your character. Through Matins, I met 
bunch of new people who I otherwise would not have connected with, both older and younger, like the Strickland boys, Nate Stone, and a bunch of other people that I don't have the time to really name off. Um, they've all helped me grow, become more outgoing, and grow myself as a person, and I bond with all of them. Without Matins, I wouldn't have been able to do that, so I'm very grateful for that. And personally, my favorite part about Matins and this church in general is that they're very accepting, no matter how you stand on faith. Like, I've always been trying to kind of fig figure that out. I still haven't really figured that out personally, but these guys just have come and accepted me anyway, so I'm very thankful for that. Thank you, John. Mary, so she comes from a very long line of music ancestors. Um, so when her family came to Plymouth, when she was in junior high, she jumped right in. And Mary has been on youth leadership team for three years, and she's added such a beautiful dimension of dance, she and her sister Esther, um, to the artistry of what we do here. So share with us a few memories that stand out to you about this choir and the power it has to change lives. Okay, so is this on? Okay. So one of my first and best memories that stands out um, from my time in Matins was my tour freshman year. During that tour, I made friends with a senior in my small group and we became very close in a very short amount of time. And without tour and the valuable time in small groups, I would not have been able to form as good connections with her and some of my other friends. Tour really um, allowed me to make those bonds that I had kind of struggled to make during the rest of the year. Um, another good memory of mine is just any of the variety shows. It's really fun to see people do their own acts and I've made some great memories during our break time before the show. My last notable memory from Matins was during our detour last year. I distinctly remember how amazing it felt to walk down the aisle as a group in our red robes after so many weeks off due to COVID. In that moment, I truly realized how special the group was and how much I had taken it for granted. Before that moment, I hadn't known how much I enjoyed and missed singing in church. Overall, I have found Matins to be a very safe community for high schoolers where you can form strong bonds with people and make lasting memories. Tour in particular is a very special experience that makes Matins a safe and strong community. Thank you. All right, I'm going to have Cole, Amelia, and Ezra come up so you can hand off your microphones. You can sit back. So, Cole, you came into Matins four years, virtually unknown to me. After tour in Ohio, I knew that you were really fun. I mean, you were part of the TikTok that the Strickland boys made that got over one million views. One million likes, eight million views, okay? But also, there was a young person who was dependable and strived to be a leader. If I ask you to do something, you'll help out. You've never hesitated. What does this experience provide for you in your life that keeps you coming back each week? All right. You need to turn it on. All right, so what I'll start by saying is that um, <laughs> many of my fellow Matins know that I'm not much of a singer. Neither is my twin brother. I've started to try to sing this past year because our bass section is a little small. Um, but I'm definitely not much of a singer, so that's definitely not what uh, kind of bring me, brings me back to men's every day. Um, but what has kept me coming back is all the friendships I've been able to make. Um, I kind of start, like, freshman year, a lot of people talked about tour freshman year. I think that was a great opportunity for a lot of us to get to know um, upperclassmen, people that we wouldn't have maybe met or talked to uh, besides that and just build some friendships and kind of have some people to look up to um, that are great role models. And then kind of more recently, just having people here that I don't see, I don't spend time with on a day-to-day -day basis, um, but they're really special people and friendships that mean a lot to me. Um, so being able to come back and kind of keep those going and make deeper uh, connections through men has been really special. Thank you. Amelia. So Amelia is so, so very kind, considerate and extremely compassionate. Even when she isn't going to be here, she never forgets to send me a text, and it is the most well-mannered text I ever receive. <laughs> Share with us, what is one of your favorite Matin songs, and what about that song makes it your favorite? Okay, so one of my favorite Matin songs is Be Still. You all might know that song. And not only is it influential with its lyrics, but also with our ability as a choir to sing it harmoniously without music at the end. So we, have, we as seniors have been singing Be Still in multiple places, such as Cleveland, Ohio, the Capitol Building, Scottish Rite, and many other places outside of Plymouth's walls. 
This song impacts everyone that listens to it, and I believe it is not only because of the lyrics, but by the way we as the Pl Plymouth Matins Choir sing it. It is a special song because we have made it special. We all have our own interpretations and own meanings, and yet it still brings us together in unison. And that is the thing about Matins that keeps kids coming back, is the connections we make with those around us that help us build a community among one another. Having a community that is separate from the ones at school, sports practices, and the ones that we have at home. Thus, Be Still embodies that community that we have made and how it continues to impact those lives that we cross. Thank you. Ezra. Ezra is one of the most loyal and reliable young persons I know, and also one of the most talkative <laughs> young persons that I know. I think he has missed maybe one Sunday in all of these years, and, um, and that was last Sunday. Um, singing is a life, really, singing is a life-giving thing for you, and during the pandemic, for 15 months, you were here every week rehearsing and recording. Tell us what music, uh, Matins, and Plymouth Church has meant to you. So music, to me, is kind of one of my only two actual skills. Everything else is just ADHD of making me want to do things. So music, to me, is a way to not only understand myself, but understand the rest of the world. So like without music, most of our daily lives would be pretty much unbearable. So being able to not only make music for myself, but share it with the rest of the world, is, it means a lot to me because I personally can't really get by without music. Like if I'm studying, I need music in the background. If I'm gonna walk somewhere, I need music in the background. And Matins is my pathway to sharing my music with the rest of the world. But not only is it that, it's kind of a second family to me. Like when I joined freshman year, I knew like five people here, not really anybody. And then I'm gonna go back to tour. Once we went on tour, I made friends with my whole, my whole tour group and a lot of the seniors of that year and I realize that this place isn't just a choir. It's a place that you can make friends that will last you a long time. So, and then Plymouth is where I can come to be in Matins and meet all of my good friends and sing good songs and have fun. Amen. All right. I'm gonna call Pearl, Emmy, Asher, and Julia. All right, Pearl. So I first got to know Pearl through her older sister, Alice, and throughout the last four years, we have formed a relationship through a lot of coffee, talks, listening, sharing joys and hurts of friendships and being a teenager. You really came into yourself um, the last two years, and it's a beautiful journey. Where have you experienced the power of the Matin spirit the most, and how has that affected you? Okay, hello, okay. Um, so I have experienced the power of the man spirit in two main places. The first one was on our detour summer 2021 when we went to Scottish Rite. Um, Plymouth was still shut down. This was a big deal for us to even be going on tour. But when we were at Scottish Rite, just seeing all the members there just singing with us and like engaging in our songs, like they know all the songs we sing by heart. They love to be involved and seeing them even just get emotional watching us perform was just really eye-opening. And also when we had our first outdoor concert post-COVID as well, just seeing how many people showed up in lawn chairs, blankets, or just sitting on the concrete just to hear us sing with our masks muffling us from 50 feet away, it just shows like how much support and love this community gives. And I know I could approach anyone in this room right now and they would open, welcome me with open arms, so. Thank you. Emmy. So Emmy showed up in the recital hall one Wednesday evening early in her freshman year with her mom, Jackie, and said, I want to be in Matins, how do I start? <laughs> she did. I even remember what she was wearing. She came from cross-country practice. Okay, oh, so she said no. I'm oh, close. Okay, right. So Emily decided to transfer, Emmy decided to transfer from Johnson to Roosevelt her freshman year, and she also brought her family with her to Plymouth. What is different about being in Matins from all the other activities you were involved in at school and in the community? Okay, so yeah, as Suze just said, I moved to Des Moines from Johnston my freshman year, 
and I left behind my home, my school, my friends, and my church. Um, and in doing so, uh, to get the chance to go to Roosevelt High School, which has been awesome, but in doing so, my parents were like, you need to do something to, um, that will encourage spiritual growth. Um, and so many of my friends were in Matins and had been in Matins since they were young. <laughs> so I was like, I, yeah, I guess I'll try it. Um, and there have been a lot of ups and downs, but overall, like, it is the only truly engaging activity I've chosen to be involved in all year. And I, like Pearl said, like, I, any of these people here, like, I don't know them, I don't know all of them that well, but I know we all care for each other very deeply. And I mean, unlike other um, things I've been involved in, it, this is, I, I've made and maintained like a lot of my best friendships through Matins. Um, I've learned to like singing, which is weird. I usually like, I used to hate singing, but now it's awesome, I love it. Um, and even though this isn't like formally a youth group, I have found a lot of opportunities, uh, or it's opened the door for a lot of conversations that have contributed to my, the, the evolution of my faith and spirituality. Um, just like talking to Tim ministers and e like other members of Mattins and, and now I'm graduated from Roosevelt, which seems so crazy. Like it seems like yesterday when I did walk in, not after cross country practice, but <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, yeah, it just feels crazy. And I'm really grateful that I have the unique um, memories and lessons that I've learned in Mattins and the community. Um, that I've been able to carry all that with me through these past four years. Julia is one of those kids that has literally grown up and been raised here at Plymouth Church. I mean, on my shelf is a picture of a younger Julia um, from Creative Arts Week, um, and it's been up there since she was a, I don't know, you were like in first or second grade. Um, the thing that I mo admire the most about Julia is her deep thinking. While the world wants a fast answer, Julia and her thoughts are worth waiting for. During the pandemic, we spent a lot of time together and she really grew into her leadership as a small group leader. She also was recording every week with the Matins Ensemble, but also trying to find ways to support and help our youth with mental health issues. What does this place mean to you and what does being in this choir mean to you and how has it shaped you? Really loaded questions. So, um, <clears throat> actually, in May of 2020, um, I, we had a book club um, through church, it was mostly youth, youth um, and we read a book called So You Want to Talk About Ra Race, um, and we met virtually every week for the duration of the summer, and there was only a handful of us who attended, but those who did were very active, engaged, and eager to learn more. This book club was an academic pursuit that I participated in outside of school, and I engaged in it because I was interested in learning about the inequality that black people have faced for centuries. This book explored how the language that white people use can be harmful to black people and other minorities and how we can improve upon it. Reading and discussing this book helped me to understand that I am given many more privileges than people that do not look like me and I have been, under I have been able to reflect on that. I've learned as a white woman that I don't always have to speak, but instead listen to other people's experiences that are different than mine. This book club was important to the development of my perspective on racial justice and informed my later interest in intersectional feminism. After reading her book, I realized that learning about racial issues was just the first step in making a change. I decided to join a club called Young Feminists and immerse myself in the feminist conversation. The movement was historically created for white women like me, but I realized that it is important to learn and advocate for all types of femme-bodied individuals, no matter their race, gender, or socioeconomic status. By, engage by engaging myself in a story and discussion from a black woman's perspective, I've started to lead my life differently now. I do not speak on issues that I have no first-hand experience with, such as missing and murdered indigenous women, but will make people aware of the issue and educate myself by reading and listening to people that experienced it. I think Plymouth was a really good place to like stem my involvement um, in this and just by having conversations with people mostly that looked like me kind of opened my eyes to want to be more inclusive and um, 
I think it was a really good place to learn how to do that here, and I couldn't have asked for a better four years, so thank you. Thank you. All right. The last group is Ada, Owen, oh, oh, no, Asher. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry, Asher. He's right here listed. So I came back from sabbatical last September to find Asher sitting in the front row of the tenor section. I had never met him. Ezra invited him, and he came, like, every Wednesday and Sunday. Share with us what uh, this year being in Matins has given to you and meant to you. It's okay. Well, first, I'd like to thank Ezra for dragging me here. It's been an amazing year. Uh, well, first, I am in three audition choirs at Roosevelt, and I thought to myself, why would I want to join another choir? That just seems like four hours of singing on Wednesdays. That's a lot of singing, but honestly, I'm so glad that he, oh, I guess we made that bet because he, if he joined chamber, I would join this choir. I'm so happy that I joined this choir because I've met so many amazing people, and this church is just fantastic. Um, also, I think it's great that I met Suze because I love singing under new directors, learning. I get to learn brand new things from every one of them. They have different skills, they have different techniques, all of them. Um, I think I've made so many new friendships through here and I feel like I've strengthened so many stronger bonds with some of my friends. And I love the community that this church has. It is so welcoming, it is so open. And I love the sermons that our pastors give. They have given me so many new perspectives on life and how to live my life and how to think about myself and how to think about others. And honestly, I think I'll be carrying all these like lessons that I've learned through the sermons and through these people here at, Ply at Plymouth for the rest of my life. Thank you. All right. We have our last group, which is Ada, Owen, Hunter, and Sage. So as Ada's coming up, um, she is another one who has spent a lot of her time in growing up years at Plymouth. Um, you've always been part of the choirs. I remember when my office used to be over by rehearsal hall, you and Shelby Hall would sit and Shelby would, was learning how to play viola and Ada played the piano and they would play duets together and um, during the 11 o'clock service while Shelby's mom was in matins or in, in chancel choir, um, I would sit and listen to them as they were growing up. Um, your talents are numerous. You sing both vocals, instrumental, you accompany our songs with flute. She writes songs. She plays in a band that just dropped a new album. Um, yeah, it's awesome. And share with us how music makes you feel, what sharing that music means, uh, with us means to you, and what's your favorite Matt song to sing? Um, I would say that music is the thing I'm most passionate about in my life. Um, and I'm certain that a lot of that passion grew during my time here at Plymouth. Um, I've been given so many opportunities through like um, since I was five because that's when I started kinder choir so I've been in choir every year since then and I've also been in the hand chime choir, um, instrumental ensemble, small group choir ensembles and then I also accompany Matins on flute from time to time um, and music makes me feel connected to the community around me and I think that there's no better way to truly experience the feeling of community than singing in a choir personally and um, yeah, so I've been given a lot of opportunities for a long time having to do with music here. So I feel like that's um, given me the chance to grow as a performer. Um, I even had a couple chances in 2020 and 2021 to perform here with my band on the outdoor lawn concerts during COVID. Um, and that was important to us because we didn't have like any other gigs for like both of those years. So I think it was really special to have a place to perform. And now we have an album out, so that's really exciting. So I've also been pretty shy all my life, I would say. So I think that performing music is a really important outlet for me, and it's also one of my favorite things to do now. And I think that grew a lot through um, the chances I had here. And my favorite Matin song is Child of God. I think it's overall just a really pretty song, but the message of inclusivity and welcome is really important. And I always feel like um, I'm a part of something larger than myself when I sing that song. Thank you. Owen. 
I do this. Owen, Owen is a quiet spirit, and he's very present, and has been for all four years. In fact, we all know that Owen has been there by what he leaves behind. A coat, a jacket. We even found the inflatable thing the th throw the, 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 that inflates your bed. We found that in one of the closets down here and returned it to him this week. We love you, we really do. Um, and in all serious, what will you miss about this place and the people you were surrounded by next year? Uh, is, this, is this on? It's on. Okay. I will miss a lot of things about this place, pretty much everything. Uh, I'll miss uh, garage sale and leaf rake, which we didn't get to do this year, which I'm a bit bummed about, but it's all right. Uh, I'll miss just the weekly like get-togethers, Sunday, uh, but most of all, I'll miss tour. I love tour, and I only got to go on one before this one, but everyone's saying how connected they got to the seniors, and that's true, and it was only on tour that that happened, and it was because they never let us do what we want. They like deprived of us of, of our free will, no, because like, if I wanted to go like take a nap, they said, no, you have to come out and play three-sack whack with us. <laughs> if I wanted to go do something, they said, no, you have to come do this thing with us. So I'm going to do the same thing to the underclassmen this year. <laughs> no naps. Yeah, they don't get naps. And I'm going to make everyone participate because, yeah, I want them to be connected to our senior class like we were connected to our senior class when we were in ninth grade. That's awesome. Thank you. Hunter, again, talk about one of those young people who step into leadership. Um, this past year, you were president of the FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes at Roosevelt, and we like to think that what you have experienced here at Plymouth was a foundation for you growing in your faith. What are some of the things here at Plymouth and Matins that have shaped you and influenced you, and how will you take that into your next journey as you are going off to West Point? Um, yeah, so one of the biggest things that Matt has taught me is how important it is to find a place where you feel comfortable exploring and, and asking questions and growing in your faith. Um, and I think one of the, the biggest things about that that Matt has taught me um, and that I've found is, is just finding a place where you can go bonds, you can ask really hard questions um, and expect not always to find the answer you want, but be able to deal with that. And, at the end of the day, love everyone, um, no matter what their opinions are, and no matter what, what they feel on certain issues. Um, and I think that's, that's really important to find. And I know I'll never find a group the same as Matins, because Matins is special and Matins is unique. But, but that's something that I will always look for in, in groups that I do choose to try to find a place where I can explore and go in my faith. Thank you. And Sage, we have watched you grow up as well. Many of you will remember Sage singing with her siblings and dad, Kirk, in the summer. When Ashton and Price became too cool to do that, Sage still sang with Kirk. She is loyal, dedicated, open-hearted, hardworking, and truly loves to share her gifts with Plymouth. How has this immense experience of growing up at Plymouth and also being a mat and shape who you are? Yeah, so I think I have a similar experience to like what Ada was saying about starting in kinder choir and going from there. So I think growing up at Plymouth and just any church in general is kind of a unique experience for kids. I think um, you're just thrown into this community that's already there for you and already has so much support. And so it's kind of just like an added factor to your life. So yeah, as Susan said, I was going to bring up the Johnson Family Singers um, in the summer. <laughs> I don't know if some of you remember. Um, but yeah, I, I always, always, always wanted to sing at church. I watched the Matins when my mom worked with them and I watched my siblings go through all of the children's choirs, and I was the first thing that I wanted to do when I became a kindergartner. So, um, and like she said, when my brother and sister stopped singing because they joined matins, um, I wanted to be the better sibling, as always, and um, kind of make my mark and keep performing. So I think it just kind of stuck with me. It wasn't really to be the better sibling, I guess. It was uh, a passion that I had formed just being in this community. And I think I've said this numerous times, but every like choir director I've had with the children's choirs 
I still have connections to with, I still have connections with to this day, and um, just being able to, to sing is something that I love doing, and it's been, it's been a great experience, especially learning from Susan, um, privately and both in the choir too. So, yeah, it's been a lot to me. So thank you for letting me sing. All right, we have heard from our seniors. What an immense experience. And we all thank Plymouth Church for embracing not only the seniors, but our, all of our youth and um, being that place that they can grow. Uh, so if you'll give a round of applause for our seniors, that would be great. people of God. Um, in response to their reflections, in response to the sharing of the word, we enter, enter into a time of sharing just a portion of what we have been given, a portion of our gifts, a portion of our spirit, our divine spirit that moves and breathes in us and that endows us with so many spiritual gifts. And thank you to all of you for sharing your spiritual gifts as well, your gifts of music, your gifts of serving, your gifts of action and calling us to do more, to go out and to be a place that is loving and affirming and welcoming to all people. So we give, we give on this Pentecost Sunday, not to say that Plymouth's way is the right way, but to say that Plymouth is a community that wants to go out and connect with people of all people and in our communities to make our communities and our world just a little bit smaller so that we can be a place that is loving and affirming of all people, no matter where they are, no matter their language, no matter their sexual orientation or gender identity. We give to connect. We give to connect with people who have that Pentecostal spiritual power that fills us. We give. Thanks be to God. Let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God.
people of God, celebrating the gift of the Spirit in community, we gather at Christ's table. It is open without exception to all who hunger and thirst for God's love and for the community of God's people. We'll receive communion today through individual cups. If you didn't receive one at the door, just flag down a deacon. I know we have, we have more available. The Spirit of God be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to God. Let us give God thanks. You may be seated. Friends, we remember that it was on his last night that Jesus sat at a table with his friends and he took a loaf of bread and he gave thanks for it. He blessed it and he broke it, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took a cup from the table, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, O God, and on these gifts of bread and cup and all the little breads and cups in our hands. Make them be for us the presence of Christ, that we may be the presence of Christ for the world. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. I invite you to open up your chalice to take and receive the bread. And the cup of new life poured out for you. I invite you to open the other side of your chalice and receive the cup. I hear the giggles of goodness behind me. <laughs> These are the gifts of God, and they are for us, people of God. May you be blessed to taste and see that the Lord is good. I invite you to stand as you are able and join in the post-communion prayer as printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Friends and people of God, at this point, we will not only say and receive a benediction together, but I invite you to reach out. I think, Lindsay, you call these our blessing hands. So I encourage you to reach out your blessing hands as we first say a word of blessing over the mountains and then as we receive a common word to go forward from this place. Will you join with me in receiving these words? Holy God, who gives us reason to sing ever and always, we ask that you pour out not only your spirit, but your blessing on all who sing, and especially the Matins who have been singing with us for years on end and even this year. We ask that you allow them to use their voices wherever they go, that justice and kindness and peace would be in their voice, 
May they change the world by their going and by their singing, even as they leave this place. And may they always know that this is still a place that is home for them. This is a place that they can return and sing always and ever, even as we all go and leave this place, longing to be your people, using our voices to extend justice and love and mercy and kindness wherever it is that we all go and sing together as one body, your people, out in the world. May we go in peace, bringing peace, always. Amen.